Looking to purchase infant between the ages of 1 to 12 months? The first ad screened in black and white letters on the Tor browser. Will pay reasonable price. Other strange and even sinister advertisements filled the page. Some offering to buy or sell kidneys or other organs. A few offered human slaves. My friend Adrian laughed next to me as he sat in his computer chair reading over my shoulder. What's a reasonable price for a black market baby? Adrian asked, pushing his large, black rimmed glasses up on his nose. His dark, lanky hair was cut into a bowl cut, making him look even younger than his 14 years. He was in my grade, and he was my best friend who I had known for over two years now, since he first moved into Frost Hollow from out west. You think any of this crap is even real? I asked, and trying to repress an urge to smile. Adrian's wheezing, almost feminine laugh almost made me crack up, even when the joke itself wasn't funny. No, of course not. What kind of mother would sell her own damn baby after all? I bet these are all scams. I bet nothing on the dark web is even real. I shrugged. There are lots of mothers willing to abort their babies, so why not sell them too? Hell, if you sell your baby on the black market, at least it's still alive, right? Yeah, I guess. I don't know, man. He said. He wiped his smile off his face. If this crap is real, what would someone want with a baby? What if it's a serial killer who likes to kill babies or something? What if they raise them to become hitmen or use them as medical experiments? What if it's a pharmaceutical company trying to get guinea pigs for human experimentation? His eyes looked glazed as his mouth ran a torrent of verbal diarrhea. Raise them to become hitmen? I asked, now laughing for real. There are easier ways to find a hitman, I think, than to raise them from scratch for 18 to 20 years. There's lots of people willing to kill for a quick buck right now, after all. Like you, Michael, Adrian said jokingly, his thin lips pressed together into a tight smile. I shook my head. That's not funny, I responded defensively. I would never hurt a fly. I looked back at the computer. We had both been curious ever since we heard about the dark web, but things were about to get a lot more sinister in the next few minutes. Have you ever heard of a red room? Adrian asked abruptly. I looked at him, confused. Isn't that like a place where prostitutes work? I asked. He laughed. <laughs> no, I think that's called a red light or something, he said, still grinning. No, red rooms are much worse. They're on the dark web, supposedly anyway. They show actual torture and murder. Apparently people can watch, and if they spend money, they can even get the torturer to do whatever they tell them to do. I gave Adrian a disgusted look. That's super messed up. There's no way that's real. I don't know, man. You ever seen Three Guys, One Hammer? That's all over the regular web, and that's real. I think we should just check it out, just to see. It would be a cool story, right? We could always just exit out quick if we found something messed up. Adrian rolled his computer chair up, pushing me to the side, as he began typing something in the Tor browser. I looked out the window of Adrian's room, seeing the dark winter night outside. Gusts of ice and snow blew sideways in the screeching winds. All over his walls, Adrian had pictures of horror characters, posters of Cthulhu and Michael Myers. A grinning picture of Charlie Manson was taped over the side of his monitor, his dark eyes sparkling mischievously. Huh, Adrian muttered under his breath. Weird. I looked over at the monitor, seeing a camera fee coming up. It showed a dark red room with a blood-stained steel table in the center. Two ancient, rusted folding chairs were set up haphazardly in the background, that was fast, I said, looking close at the screen. What is this? What did you find? Adrian gave me a strange look. His thin face went pale. It, it was a link for a camera feed to the afterlife, supposedly, Adrian responded, giving a short bark of fake laughter, and yet his face showed clear anxiety. I wondered why. It, it said it's a red room for hell, 
Yeah, that's definitely bullshit, I said, smirking as I glanced over at the monitor. The door in the back of the dark room on the screen suddenly opened. There was a strobing, fiery glow that turned the video feed blood red for a few moments, as if an active volcano or a structure fire raged in the background. When it had cleared and the door had slammed closed, I saw two figures in the room, staged in the exact center of the screen. A man with a black hood over his head lay on the blood-stained metal table, tied down with rusted razor wire that wrapped around his body like a snake. The wire bit deeply into his skin. Wet rivulets of blood soaked his clothes, which looked like some sort of khaki prison uniform. In front of the camera stood something demonic, something eyeless and tall. It had a pointed, bone-white head. Only a wide slash of a mouth marred the smooth flesh. It wore a shimmering black robe that fluttered around its body as if in a light breeze. It raised its white hands, its sharp, twisted fingers, clenching and unclenching. As it opened its hands, I saw eyes in the center of each of its palms, black and lidless. They rolled in their sockets. My name is Mr. Slither, the abomination hissed. His throat gurgled as if he had gargled with hydrochloric acid. His voice was diseased and low, not much more than a sickly whisper emanating from the speakers. I want to welcome you both to the show. Adrian pulled back as if he had been physically struck. I felt sick and weak, but I couldn't look away. Mr. Slither's skin crackled loudly as a grin split his smooth alien face. He slunk back towards the table, navigating his way with spiky fingers held out in front of his body, like a man walking through a room in total darkness. Mr. Slither knelt down and ripped off the victim's black hood, revealing a pale, emaciated face brimming over with mortal terror, but the face looked familiar. With a growing sense of horror, I immediately realized why. On the flickering screen of the monitor, I saw the face of my father, a man who had died nearly five years ago when a drunk driver going the wrong way on the highway smashed into his truck, killing him instantly. The drunk driver had been fine, just a few deep gashes and cuts from broken glass. But now I was forever without my father. It felt like a piece of my heart had been sliced out, and a black, empty void filled it. Mr. Slither appeared behind my father, raising his hands, the black eyes on the palms rolling constantly. My father's teeth chattered as he looked straight at the camera with a pleading expression. The horror and fear in his eyes shook me to the core. My vision became blurry, a single tear running down my cheek. I blinked fast, breathing hard, and trying to focus on the screen. Michael, I, I know you can hear me, my father said. My heart raced as I heard his voice, a voice I had heard only in my dreams for so long. I wondered if this was real at all. Perhaps I would wake up at any moment, surrounded by darkness, alone in my bedroom. What the fuck? Adrian whispered close beside me, leaning towards the monitor and blinking fast. Who's that guy on the table? What even is this? I have no idea what we're watching right now, but, but that's some crazy mask that guy has on. Holy shit! I had only known Adrian for a couple of years so he had never met my father before his untimely death, and, therefore, wouldn't have recognized him. That, that's my dad, I whispered. Michael, please listen to me. You need to destroy the computer and get out of the house. Smash the monitor, burn the motherboard. My father was cut off when Mr. Slither's crackling, elongated limbs wrapped around his face. His fingers like black railroad spikes drew across my father's face slowly and caressingly, almost like a lover. My cool, 
Mr. Slither gurgled in a deep voice brimming with infection. You are able to see what others will not. The true nature of all things. You and your friend must watch this now all the way to the end. And because it will reveal to you what was hidden behind the veil. This is where everyone ends up after they die, you see. In our cold concrete rooms. Dissected alive on steel tables. Burned, tortured, melted, boiled, and frozen. They stay alive forever. For Yaldabaoth, the one you call God, and despises humanity with every piece of his eternal soul. They heal eternally, drinking from the fountain of life as death crushes them over and over again, like ships flung on a rocky shore. As if to demonstrate, Mr. Slither drew his sharp fingers back, slicing slowly and painfully through my father's cheeks. The flaps of skin fell down with a bubbling of blood. My father screamed, an expression of total agony and mortal terror changing his face into a grimace. Mr. Slither laughed, raising his hands up above his head, and the black eyes spinning as they stared straight at me and Adrian. My father tried to pull away, but the razor wire bit deeper into his flesh, making fresh streams of blood drip from his mutilated body. Turn it off! I screamed, lunging for the computer. I hit the power button on the front, holding it down and waiting. I watched the screen with bated breath, but Mr. Slither only laughed. <laughs> The hell, Adrian, do something. But Adrian only sat there like a sheep, his mouth open, his eyes glazed. This, this has to be a prank, Adrian whispered, watching the screen with a horrified expression. Mr. Slither turned his attention back to my father. His twisted fingers came down, forcing my father's lips apart. As my father grit his teeth and tried to pull his head away, Mr. Slither reached his fingers in, prodding and pushing. There was a crackling sound and a blossoming splash of blood. My father gave a muted shriek as Mr. Slither pulled. Worthy is the lamb. Mr. Slither wailed as his bone-thin arms crackled. Worthy indeed. With a cracking of bone and an explosion of blood, my father's jaw came ripping off. The monitor strobed and wavered as waves of crackling static ran down the screen. With a screech like a tea kettle boiling, flames and suffocating clouds of black smoke began to arise from the computer and monitor at once. The electricity flickered and died, plunging the house into total silence. In the total darkness, a warm, sweaty hand reached out and grabbed mine. I felt Adrian's whole body tremble as he held my hand. I thought I could count each beat of his thudding heart through his skin. I don't think this is a prank, Adrian whispered furtively, his voice shaken. I couldn't even see an inch in front of my nose. I took a deep breath. I had been crying, I realized, feeling wet trails of tears standing my cheeks. This has to be a prank, I said quietly. You know how easy it is to fake stuff with AI now? Any drooling idiot can do it. My dad's dead. That's not him. It's simply impossible. N none of this is possible. Then what happened to the power? Adrian asked. And how did that thing know the two of us were here? And how did your father know your name and that you were watching? I felt rivers of sweat rolling down my forehead in the pitch black. I just shook my head. Obviously, someone hacked your computer and, and, and was watching us through the webcam. <laughs> That's how they knew my name and everything. They, they probably stole all of your information, Adrian. That doesn't make a lot of sense, man. 
Adrian argued. Something hot and furious twisted its way through my chest. No shit, it doesn't make a lot of sense, I yelled. But obviously, none of it was real. You really think a frickin' link to the afterlife is just gonna appear on the dark web? Whenever you have eliminated the impossible, then whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. Don't tell me you actually believe you were looking into a vision of hell. I heard Adrian inhale deeply, sighing. He started to say something when the computer monitor abruptly came back to life. Torrents of fire and lava sizzled their way down the screen, illuminating the room in a dim, bloody glow. The shadows in the corners creeped towards us, leaving the edges of the room in blackness. The walls had changed as well, and turning an angry and dark red, the color of an infected wound. The rest of the power was still out. I knew we were alone in the house, at least until Adrian's parents got back. At least, that's what I hoped. Adrian abruptly gave a cry like a strangled cat. He grabbed my shoulder with his thin, trembling hand. I jumped, turning to look at him in surprise. What is... I began to say, when I saw his eyes, as wide as saucers and emanating an unspeakable animal terror. They were looking directly over my shoulder at something behind me. I glanced back my heart hammering ice water through my veins. My eyes widened as I realized Adrian's room now looked completely different. Other than the computer desk and the two chairs, everything was gone. All of his furniture, his bed, his posters, even his bookshelves stocked with sci-fi and fantasy, everything had been wiped away in an instant and replaced. I saw a cold steel table covered in blood. My father lay on it, his body still tied tightly down with razor wire. It sliced into his wrists, his ankles, his chest, and stomach. Frothy blood bubbled from his destroyed jaw. Mr. Slither had ripped off his entire mandible within the space of a moment. My father still lived, at least for now. His eyes rolled wildly, like a horse with a broken leg. They fixed on me for a long moment, and he seemed to calm down slightly. My father tried to speak, his bloody, mutilated tongue still flapping. He made noises. It seemed like my father tried to say something important, but I had no idea what that could be. Behind him, two more steel tables lay, covered in gore but otherwise empty. We need to get out of here, Adrian whispered frantically, grabbing my hand. I nodded, unable to speak. I couldn't even look at my father, writhing on the table like some victim of human experimentation at a death camp. We got up together, running to the door. The floor was covered in ancient blood that stuck to our shoes with a tacky, sucking sound. My father continued to cry out in incomprehensible syllables. His voice had become more frantic, as if he were trying to communicate something vital, but neither of us could understand a single word. As Adrian ripped the door open and we flew through into the upstairs hallway into total darkness, I heard a car engine turning off outside. A few moments later, a key slid its way into the front door downstairs. I heard Adrian's parents talking softly in a low susurration as they came in, unaware of the hell they were entering. They'd become aware of it soon, though. Mom, Daddy, get out of the house! Adrian screamed in a high-pitched voice, choked with anxiety and fear. They stopped talking suddenly, their barely audible footsteps pausing. Adrian, his father called out, sounding worried. We had reached the stairs by this point and were slowly descending to the first floor, feeling our way forward in the darkness. What is it? Dad, there's someone in the house, Adrian cried. Get out and call the cops now. His father's face appeared at the bottom of the stairs a few seconds later. He had a flashlight in his hand, shining it up at us. An expression of grave concern flickered over his narrow, serious face. All right, boys, come down and we'll find out what... His father started to say, still shining the flashlight up at us, when a pale, twisted hand reached out of the darkness and grabbed him. The sharp spikes of fingers pierced into his neck. Blood exploded from the wounds, the long arm dragged him away. 
a wet sound filled with gurgling and muted screams drifted up to us. A few moments later, it cut off, and then everything in the house went quiet. Adrian and I paused halfway down the stairs. We had no cell phones to call for help. I had a lighter in my pocket I kept for smoking weed, though. Reaching frantically down, I pulled it out and flicked it, giving us some meager light to see by. Where's mom? Why don't I hear her? He looked sick and weak, as if he were about to pass out. Do you think dad's okay? In truth, I didn't. But I wasn't about to say that. We need to go back and jump out the window. and I'm not going down there, I said. I started backpedaling away, back towards Adrian's room and the tortured visage of my father. What about... Mom, what about Dad? We can't just leave them down there. We need to go get help, man, I answered. We need to get the cops here immediately. What are you going to do if you go down there besides die or get seriously hurt? You think you can take that thing? As if in response, we heard gurgling, disease breathing from the floor below. Without hesitation, I turned and ran. A moment later, Adrian's light footsteps followed me back to the room. I ran to the window, trying to unlock it in the dark. I flicked the lighter with one hand and began to get it open when a grinning, eyeless face peered around from the threshold of the door. Son of a bitch! It's here! It's here! Run! Adrian cried. The window slid open with a tortured squeal of rust. I looked down for a brief moment before starting to crawl out of the window. Behind me, Adrian was pushing me forward and trying to get out himself. I had gotten my body most of the way through when a hand as cold as liquid nitrogen closed around my ankle and pulled me back inside. I fought, kicking and thrashing. Another hand came down around my face. I bit down on a finger as hard as I could. Freezing cold blood with a taste of sulfur flowed into my mouth. Mr. Slither only laughed. With a powerful swing of his hand, he slammed my head into the wall. All the colors of the world faded away to darkness as oblivion took over. I awoke to a screaming in my skull, a migraine that felt like it would split my head in two. I groaned, my eyes fluttering open. I looked around the room, realizing I was tied down to one of the tables with a rope. Next to me, Adrian lay, still unconscious. Mr. Slither stood between us. He had one arm extended out to each of us. The black, lidless eye and the bleached white palm, rolling wildly with insanity and hunger. Yalbadoth has a red room waiting for every child in eternity. Mr. Slither gurgled. Every parent, every brother, every sister... There is no heaven, not for the sons and daughters of Adam. Only endless suffering awaits you beyond the veil. Why, why are you doing this to me? I asked in a hoarse voice. Waves of nausea ripped their way through my stomach. Why? Mr. Slither leaned down his smooth face coming close to mine. There is no why. There is only eternity. He paused, pulling away. What color is death? He hissed, almost contemplatively. The white light of tunnels leading up to heaven... The black of oblivion, the blue of cyanotic lips and dying fingernails. <laughs> ah, it's none of these. Death is red. As red as the rooms where the damned scream in agony forever. <laughs> ah, 
Dessie is red, as red as a rose in full bloom. Eternity is here waiting for you, waiting to consume your flesh like a virus. Adrian woke abruptly then, his eyes shooting open behind his black rimmed glasses. He had a deep gash slice across his forehead, and his nose was bleeding badly. He turned his head, spitting blood straight to mucus on the floor. After a few moments, he started to get his bearings. He looked over at me then, with an increasing sense of terror gleaming on his face. He turned to Mr. Slither. You killed my father, you piece of shit! He spat angrily, tears rolling down his face. Mr. Slither only grinned down at him, an expression of pure sadism. Ah, like father, like son. Mr. Slither whispered coldly, running his long, twisted fingers over the table like a spider. They crawled over Adrian's face and gently took off his glasses. P -p 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 Please, t -t -t don't hurt me, Adrian pleaded. Mr. Slither only laughed as he took a sharp index finger and lowered it to Adrian's eye. No, no, for God's sake. There was a wet sound, the sound of blood gushing and flesh separating. Adrian screamed in anguish. I had closed my eyes, unable to look. But I heard the sound of chewing, something popping. Adrian hyperventilated nearby, still pleading and shrieking. I looked over, seeing Mr. Slither slicing open Adrian's shirt with his scalpel-like fingers. His hand hovered over the center of his chest. One of Adrian's eyes was gone, the black socket staring sightlessly up. The heart of all things. <laughs> Mr. Slither whispered in his infected tone. With a quick stab, he shoved his fingers deep into Adrian's chest. The cracking of ribs reverberated through the room with a sickening snap. I heard police sirens in the distance, growing closer by the second. A faint surge of hope fluttered through my chest, even as I looked at this abomination holding my best friend's beating heart in his alien hand. Mr. Slither came over to me, looking down with glee and excitement. He ran his left hand over my face. I could feel the sharp points of the finger tracing their way down my cheek, slowly and caressingly. Oh, where should we start? He asked in a low, throaty voice. With the eyes. He ran one of his fingers around my eyelids, tracing light circles and sent shivers running through my flesh. Ah, oh, maybe the tongue. Oh, how about... Hey, scumbag! A woman's voice cried from the door. Mr. Slither slowly rose to his full height turning to look at the newcomer. I saw Adrian's mother standing there, holding a pistol in her hand. She was in the weaver stance, ready to fire. As soon as Mr. Slither raised his hand out towards Adrian's mother and looked at her with a single demonic eye, she fired. The bullet smashed straight into Mr. Slither's outstretched hand, blowing his obsidian eye to pieces. Fragments of skin and blood exploded from the wound, he gave a diseased shriek of pain and stumbled forward. He still held Adrian's heart in his right hand, and without hesitation, he threw it at Adrian's mother. The heart soared across the room, drops of blood flying out in all directions as it spiraled through the air. It smacked her in the face with a wet thud. She stumbled back, shaking her head. The spatters of crimson ran like raindrops down her face and hair. She gave a low, anguished moan, and for a moment, I thought she would simply faint. But as Mr. Slither ran at her with vengeance and fury, she came to life, raising the gun and firing again and again. 
the bullet smashed through his chest, his stomach, and legs. Dark, sluggish blood, the consistency of maple syrup dripped from the many wounds. Bent over and looking much weaker, Mr. Slither slammed in Adrian's mother. He raked his sharp fingers over her face as he passed. She screamed in pain, falling back heavily. The floor shook as Mr. Slither disappeared down the stairs, still wailing in a diseased voice full of pain and uncertainty. After a few moments, Adrian's mother moaned and pushed herself up slowly. In the bloody glow of the computer monitor, I could see the deep wounds marring her face. Her right cheek had been slashed in two, the flaps of skin hanging down like the slashed fabric of a tent. Her right eye was badly damaged, dripping vitreous fluid and crimson streaks down her face like bloody tears. A deep gash ran across her forehead and chin as well. She stumbled forward towards me, looking dissociated and on the verge of passing out. She glanced over at Adrian's corpse for a long, sad moment, then turned her attention back to me. She reached into her pocket and pulled out a folding knife, which she used to begin cutting the rope. As she freed me, and we finally left that room of horrors, the first of the police cars reached the driveway. As I would find out later, Adrian's mother had called the police on her cell phone before returning to save us. The bodies of Adrian, his father, and my father were all gone by the time the police searched the house. Only a few steel tables still remain in the room, covered in layers of gore and clotted blood. Mr. Slither had disappeared as well, and for that, I give thanks. I hope I never see that disgusting monster again. But what he told me makes me wonder. What if he was right? What if, after death, we all end up in eternal misery, tortured and killed over and over again until the end of time? I never used to be afraid of death. But after my experiences with Mr. Slither in the Red Room, I'm terrified.